How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy New Year, everybody. The first show for me for the year was a wild 2023 in the world of professional wrestling. I think 2024 is going to be even nuttier. We'll speculate on some of that today. Our producers are here. John and Matt are here also hanging out with us. Big year. A lot of stuff is shaping up here. Monday Night Raw, the return of The Rock. This surprised a lot of people. First show, day one, The Rock returned. Royal Rumble is starting to shape up, which is my favorite pay-per-view. You know, I like I love WrestleMania, right? You know what you're getting, but... Whatever, you know, from my childhood, Rumble is the one. That's the one I get super excited for. If there was one match that I get excited for more than anything else, it's the Royal Rumble. That's coming at the end of the month. I was at World's End last week. I had great difficulty (laughs) waking up in the morning and functioning. Uh, Obviously, it was New Year's Eve. We did not do a show. Uh, You know, I thought about recording it early, but I got home after three o'clock in the morning after that media scrum uh, from Worlds. And I just I had nothing left of me. I had no voice. I couldn't do a show, but I'm going to give you my thoughts on that being in the building and what it was like and then watching it on TV and seeing what you guys saw on TV. Also, uh, the 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 tweets that that have send jolts through X and social media, and that's Mercedes Monet and where she's going to end up. I have some insight on this. Listen, man, I, I'm, I just say what I'm told. <laughs> I'm sorry it upsets some of you. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more here when we come back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. I'm glad you guys are with me today. It's going to be a great year. 2024 is going to be a fantastic year for professional wrestling. It's going to be a great year in your lives and my lives. I'm sending out positive affirmations here for everybody. Positive affirmations, all right? We're going to have a great year. You know, we did kick off Raw with a, with a humongous, uh, humongous return in many ways. Dwayne The Rock Johnson returned to Monday Night Raw. You know, this was teased on social media by Triple H. He put out a tweet saying that a former champion will be returning to Monday Night Raw. A lot of people were speculating it was Andrade. I, you know... I don't know. I don't know how much of a clause he has on his contract. I didn't assume it was going to be Andrade. I thought when they said a former champion, I thought a former world champion. And that's exactly what it was at the 10 o'clock hour, right? It was a 10 o'clock hour it happened. MG, or am I wrong? Yeah, but I think it was a 10, or it could have been nine. I can't remember now. This is seven days ago, six days ago. So, so long ago. Jinder Mahal comes out, and he cut this fascinatingly anti-American foreign menace promo straight out of 1986 you know and I was like okay this is this is interesting and there you go rocks promo hit he does the rah rah America uh you know what what was what was his old thing he said this if you don't like it leave it that 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 you know in more ways than one he cut a very very yeah it was very um almost political and it, it almost it was political and i was like is this his campaign yeah. is he announcing he's running for president i mean that's that's how it kind of felt at one point <laughs> but he did all the rock lines you know it was the best of the rock uh and good and bad you know and which is interesting because you start realizing how the art of the promo has evolved from 1999 you know we went with the rock oh, yeah. style rock of promo like that, and right? then we went into like yeah. the shoot era of promos and then you know, now we're go- kind of going backwards a little bit where guys are looking at the camera and addressing you. Uh, I, you know, I it's fine. It's The Rock's promo. He's not going to do anything different. I, I didn't hate it as much of a, as much as other people. You know, they, he, he brawled with them. He did the people's elbow. He was winded. This guy was sucking air throughout that second half of that promo, and he grabs the mic. Blown up as he was say really, in the biz. <laughs> listen, you know, I, he's 50-something years old. He's 51 now. The guy doesn't do this. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. For whatever he does, he'll be in good shape. The guy is a beast in the gym. He does tremendous cardio, but it's very different when you're in front of the ring. And also, being in front of a live crowd, it kind of gets the nerves going, you know, no matter who you are. 
being in front of 15,000 people or 12,000 people cheering your name, you kind of get emotional. And obviously, The Rock is very emotional about professional wrestling. It's his uh, family's uh, livelihood and their, and their, their, their lineage. So The Rock says, um, you know, I thought the line was good. I'm hungry. Uh, do I sit at a booth? Do I sit at the bar? Or do I sit at the head of the table? And the crowd goes, oh, my gosh. I thought it was fine. So now the question is, when? Mm -hmm. You're finally getting it after all these years. Every time I've asked WWE, it's always been the same answer. When Dwayne is ready, we will figure it out for him. And I guess this is it, right? This He's ready. They're not going to tease this unless it's done. So yeah, it's him and they Roman. Just, they've already went beyond the line, right? Oh, yeah. They they've went already... far beyond. They can't. No, no backseats. Yeah. They There's they no backseats back here. Now, right. Yeah. Like, remember when they did that thing with Hunter? Uh, years ago, where yep. they did that face to face on SmackDown, and it was like, "Oh crap, it's happening! They're gonna have that match again." You know, this was far beyond that. Mm -hmm. This was far beyond that. CM Punk and Austin WWE 2K20, 2K13 uh, mock interview with Jr. This went beyond that. Yeah. This was solidifying that this is happening. So now the question is: Okay, when? Where, how, all the right questions. Interesting. Uh, so if we're going to look at when this could happen, obviously the, the, the smart guess, right? The smart bet is WrestleMania. Night two, or night one, whatever, however you want to do it. That is the biggest match that you could put on at a WrestleMania. You don't get a chance to do these too often. Somehow there's been these rumors that, oh, can it happen at Elimination Chamber in Australia? It's possible. I don't know why they would give it away there, but I guess they could. Uh, I think it has to do with the fact that Australia's, I guess, tourism or municipality had requested The Rock to get, to get this going. I mean, he could still be there. That's still a possibility. Yeah, I just don't think I want to see him do that match. You realize it's going to be like 8 o'clock in the morning here right oh i love that <laughs> i can't wait well I know earlier you do, but yeah. earlier the better yeah they're it's, not gonna right. i don't think the rock and roman are wrestling at like 11 in the morning east coast whatever time it fall well actually you should find that out on the next break what time would that fall if they were to have that match mm. so you know uh, i already we, had it uh, okay go ahead pull it, pull it mm -hmm. up when you can um you know raw did 1.75 million with a 0.60 18 to 49 uh, it was the best mark since Punk's return. Interesting that he debuted on Raw. Considering he's going after someone on SmackDown, but this is just another, you know, nice little uh, bump to their ratings. You know, WWE is a machine right now. They are they are firing on all cylinders. You know, where's Lesnar? That's the other question, right? That's another return that may be anticipated. There's that speculation and the rumor of Austin and Punk maybe having a match. You know, if there was ever a time that it could happen, this kind of would be it, right? If 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 Punk is not in the main event of WrestleMania, like as for for a title, what's the second best match he could do? <laughs> I mean, that's that's a main event match. Now, again, I'm I'm just speculating here, right? I'm just speculating based on early rumors of stuff. I think, you know, this is this is very interesting, and the ending of SmackDown told a big story here, where. You're getting multiple people. It's going to be AJ Styles, LA Knight, and Randy Orton, which we're going to talk about SmackDown, against Roman. And this is the Rumble match. It's a fatal four-way. So Roman could be beat without getting pinned, which is still another thing that he could carry with him, right? It's still, uh, you know, linear to his character of not losing. So that's a possibility. He still hasn't been pinned. For that championship. I mean, it's been years he's held that title. The other thing is he has another milestone coming up. Which I believe is 1,282 days? MG? Uh, it's something like that. Some, whatever it is, right? Hulk Hogan? He, no, no, no. The uh, second Bruno record. The Hogan record is 1,400. I, I, I can't see oh, yeah. him coming oh, to yeah. that. That'll be September. Second Bruno, I think the second Bruno record is next weekend. It's next weekend, so yeah. Yeah, and something like that. It's very close. It's within a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then, I mean, listen, uh, we've talked about this a bunch. WWE had an initiative here. They had a mission. 
and that was to update the record books. And they've done it with numerous things. They've done it with the U.S. title. They've done it with the IC title, where Gunther now has had that title for a very long time, and he's going up in the rankings as as a long term champion. Uh, the the whatever title this falls under, as far as WWE title lineage goes, Roman is in that top four, right? And it, it it's fascinating how this turns out because the each of those champions in that top four are very meaningful in the transition of that company of WWF, WWWF. Bruno began for Vince's dad as being his big champion. Backlund ended it. Hogan began Vince's dominant, long-term mega champion. And Roman ended it with Vince exiting. So I, I think this is a, you know, it, there's a story within that ranking of the, of the, the history books. It makes sense. I'm happy they did that. I think Roman is very well deserved to be on that top tier. The guy uh, did a total 180. So I, I think it's fine. I think what, but whatever they do, you got to now figure out what happens to Cody's story. What happens with the world title? What happens with CM Punk? What happens with Roman Reigns? What happens with Dwayne? There's a lot of moving parts now. And this is the most exciting time to watch wrestling. If you're a WWF fan, WWF WWF fan. See, I'm dating myself. You know, every now and then it slips out. Every now and then I date myself. Uh, we're in the hottest period right now for WWE. From now to April, we just got to stand back and watch and enjoy if that's what you want to watch. When we come back from break, we're going to go into Mercedes Monet. What's happening with her? AEW Dynamite, Collision. SmackDown and everything else happening in the world of professional wrestling here. And a lot of news, a lot of free agent stuff happening. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here back on Sports Byline. If you guys are watching live, do you I'm having an allergic reaction to something. My entire face is breaking out in hives while we do this. I think I, I had Korean fried chicken right before we started the show. And I think I touched, like, the spices and, like, rubbed my face. And now I'm breaking out in hives here. Fun stuff. Mercedes Monet, let's talk about this. I have never, in all the years of covering professional wrestling, I've done this for, on this level, short period of time, right? The Observer, being on The Observer has been a tremendous uh, uh, thing for me uh, last couple of years. But I've, I've been covering this. I've been doing a show for 12 years about professional wrestling. Never in those years have I received the... Um, I guess passionate would be the best way to put it. Uh, responses regarding this. I've gotten death threats over, uh, I mean, just crazy stuff. I mean, this is, I've, I've never seen anything like this, to be honest. Uh, very, very much turned me off to even tweet or put something on there. Uh, people are deranged. But this has to do with Mercedes Monet. It's very likely a Mercedes is going to AEW very soon. Okay, um, if you follow me, you know I get some information every now and then, and I'm able to, you know, put it out there. I put an image of a Mercedes Benz with somebody holding a bunch of cash, okay, and it started the speculation because I was having some fun, and then I, I think on the show on Map Men, I was pretty clear that I anticipate her to go based on what has been said to me. I know that Fightful. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful put out a Fightful Select article uh, essentially saying that it's expected that she will be there soon. Uh, and I said the same thing. Um, I would anticipate it to be soon. I don't know the week. I don't know the creative plans. I haven't asked. I just think it's going to be soon. Now, is it soon like next week? I don't know. Is it soon like the week after? Possible. I mean, it, it's in the coming weeks. Whether or not, you know, whether or not that's now or at the pay-per-view. But it's hap I believe it's happening. Unless something takes this off its tracks. I think Tony has been very clear, and especially in that scrum, he was very clear that his goal is to build that women's division uh, to be very competitive. And we saw one debut this week. Of Deanna Parazzo in New Jersey, New Jersey native. Deanna comes out, uh, is in now in a program of Mariah May, 
which I think is fantastic. I think Diana's very good. This is another piece to that puzzle. I'm just a messenger. I have no bias towards her going to WWE or going to AEW. It's honestly, I don't even care. Make the best business decision for yourself. I don't know why anybody is so invested in this to the extent that they are threatening and they're arguing and they're fighting. You're fighting over with each other over somebody getting a new job and making a ton of money. It's bonkers to me. I, it really is. I find the whole thing disturbing. The rhetoric online amongst people is beyond disturbing. But, you know, she's a mega star. And, and, you know, here's the positive. People are very passionate about her. And that says something about her value. You know, people, I put out something like, oh, you know, she has a very, one of the most passionate fan bases. And I said it in a nice way. And people are like, well, how about CM Punk? I go, you know, when we spoke about CM Punk, I never got this. I never got the messages when I said, you know, he is coming back to AEW. He is coming back uh, to uh, Collision. You know, he is starting Collision. I, I was on top of that story from day one. And I never got one piece of negativity like I did with Mercedes Monet. Very polarizing. But I anticipate that she will go to AEW. Is it possible she doesn't? Sure, anything is possible. She could change her mind tomorrow, but I don't believe that that will be the case. Very interesting stuff here, but I, I do think that is a great piece to Tony's arsenal here in 2024, especially when you were, you know, creating uh, the scenario where you're going to get a better TV rights deal. You want to fill these missing pieces in to complete your television. And I think Tony has a lot of work to do with their TV. I loved Collision last night, but really I loved it because it was, it was fun wrestling. I didn't love it because they had a mega storyline unfold. I mean, they did at the end with the, with the House of Black and FTR, but I was watching that for the match. These little things are going to fill in those holes for that company. Talking about free agents. Let's go to this. A lot of free agency stuff ha happened also. Trinity, Naomi, is set to return back to WWE. That was reported this week. Probably a rumble, right? She shows up. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Probably. You know, I always found it fascinating she's that they the, didn't... She's still the champion, though. She's so they... She's, I think yeah. they're doing their... That pay-per-view is this weekend, It's It's this weekend, yeah. It's this weekend. Yeah. So maybe she drops. If she drops, then yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Deanna Parazzo also uh, made her AEW de Dynamite debut. Uh, I, I, I always have felt that she's there. There's, there's, there's something special about Deanna. Uh, I, I think that nobody was really able to kind of tap into it as much. I think she, her TNA run was far better than uh, what she ever did in NXT or WWE. She didn't really get that opportunity there for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm hoping that AEW is a good fit for her, you know, just to, to kind of show what she's capable of. Alex Hammerstone is also a free agent. We'll be facing Josh Alexander at TNA Hard to Kill later this month. Alex, uh, Alex Hammerstone, MLW's Alex Hammerstone, uh, is, out, is out of MLW, but MLW is doing some fascinating moves here too, which we're going to talk about in a second here. Nick Nemeth. Formerly known as Dolph Ziggler showed up at Wrestle Kingdom with his brother during the tag. I think it was the tag match they showed up, right? Yeah, it was right before the tag, the yeah. tag team title match. Yeah, I and got a little confused because I thought that was the like story. Three like three matches. Yeah, yeah, I thought they were going to show up for the tag match, get involved somehow, and then that was what they were challenging for. But no. Dolph, Nick Nemeth, has his eyes set on David Finley for the new title that they created. And he attacked him backstage after the match, after his, uh, yeah. after Finley won that three way. Well, you know, and this is going to be, this awesome is, I, to watch. I think the Nick Nemeth stuff is going to be interesting. Either this is going to be a, listen, I'm using this term very loosely, okay? And I don't want to hear the, the, the feedback that, like, I can't believe you're comparing this. When Styles went to New Japan, right? Everybody knows his capab capabilities as a wrestler. I don't think people, discovered, uh, realized the trajectory his career would have from that move. From going to New Japan, 
and doing all that stuff with the Bullet Club, becoming IWGP champion, that was a tremendous moment for that guy's career where it set him on this path of going to WWE, becoming a two-time WWE champion and looking like a million bucks right now on TV. The guy is jacked to the gills. This is an opportunity for Nick Nemeth to show what he's been capable of all these years that he couldn't do on WWE TV. Remember, this guy came in an era where they were working very safe and very one-styled. And he got so much criticism for being uh, unsafe to his own body based on concussions and things he was doing. And, you know, he had a little bit of a stink on him. And he went away for a while. He came back. He went away. Maybe this is an opportunity to hit the reset. And he could say, look, I am beyond capable. And I'm up there with the best of the best. I hope it is. I think this is interesting stuff for him to go there. Also, at New Year's Dash, Matt Riddle challenged Tanahashi. He's going to take part in the upcoming tour for New Japan. Uh, okay, I think they could have a great match. Matt Riddle, forget about his personal issues. He's a tremendous wrestler. And we saw that last night at MLW. Also, yeah, also Battle in the Valleys next weekend, too. And yeah. that card is, uh, is stacked. Oh, oh my exactly. gosh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I, I hope that this is a nice moment for Matt Riddle to kind of uh, get back on that horse again, positively. He, um, he wrestled Jacob Fatu last night at MLW's show, and he won. He beat Jacob Fatu. Some people are very upset that he came back and he beat their long-term, you know, existing resident of that company. You got to do something different. I, 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 I saw pieces of the match. I didn't watch the entirety, but it looked like it was a, it was a good match. And the feedback was positive, too. He MLW's doing his, some uh, interesting things. He revenge on the bloodline. <laughs> he, got, he finally got his revenge on the bloodline. The wrong one, though. The wrong, the wrong, right. uh, the wrong oose. You know? I thought, it was, I thought it was done well. Last week, like I said, we got a couple minutes here before break. I'm going to talk about it. I was at World's End. At the Nassau Coliseum, I had a blast seeing you guys. A ton of you guys were there. I saw uh, our very own JJ. JJ was there. I sat with JJ. I sat with Corey. We had a great time for five hours watching wrestling together. I had a blast watching with those two dudes. Uh, total sweethearts. Like, totally, totally. What, what great, great guys. Uh, great to be in that building. It was a hot building. I don't, know, I don't think it came across on TV as well as it did in the building, but the building was jam-packed. It was totally sold out. Uh, they had 10,000 people in seats. It looked great. I, I had, I, I thought watching it live, it was a really, really fun show. Was it the best AEW show I've been to? No, because that obviously is <laughs> the best AEW pay-per-view that they've ever done, in my opinion. And that's all in 2021, all out 2021. And I was there. I, I, I thought it was a great show. I thought it was a fantastic show. You know? I'm not big on the, 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 the devil stuff. That, that was a little convoluted to me. Uh, there were a couple things that they did with the finishes that were a little wacky. But regardless, I thought it was a really fun show, and I had a great time. Uh, what was your favorite match from there, Matt, from that show? Um, the Christian um, uh, Cam yeah. Copeland match. By that was, that was fantastic. The ending, again, I didn't love the ending, but I thought yeah. that match was great. I thought those two did uh, a tremendous brawl. The table spot could and have been Eddie better. Win. Poor Eddie, Eddie winning, win obviously. Too. Yeah, that was the best, best, best actual match was that. But uh, right. poor, mm -hmm. poor, uh, poor Nick Wayne coming off that table <laughs> spot. He totally missed it and nailed his head on the back of the floor. Interesting stuff. When we come back, we're going to talk about Collision. We're going to talk about SmackDown and everything leading up to Royal Rumble in a couple of weeks here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer live here on Sports Byline. My my producers are screaming at each other right before we come back from break. They're at a total war. I have no idea why. It's hysterical to me because I just hear yelling of random voices in my head here. Let Battle at the uh, in the Valley. Matt, our producer, brought it up. This card is stacked. This is next week, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, I believe it's Saturday night at ten thirty. Eastern time. Yeah, it's a, so it's it's a, a little Pacific late, but show. holy moly. Look at this card. Okada and Will Ospreay. Fantastic. John Moxley, Shingo Takagi. 
AW Continental Crown. Th did you notice that they are not calling this the Triple Crown anymore? It's the Continental Crown? Yeah, and apparently they're defending. He's defending all three titles every time because it does say for the Continental, Continental Crown. Crown. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I wonder if it's a trademark thing with All Japan that they can't call it the uh, Triple Crown, but the Continental Crown. Eddie Kingston defends against Gabe Kidd. Matt Riddle and a mystery partner versus Zack Sabre Jr. and Bad Dude Tito. Curious who the mystery partner could be. NJPW strong women's champion Julia defends against Trish Adora. Okay, that's great too. Hikaleo and El Fantasma defend the N uh, New Japan uh, Openweight Tag Titles against Clark Con Connors and Alex Coglin. Dave Finley versus TJP. Volador Jr., Mascara Dorado versus Rocky Romero and so uh, Soberano Jr. Shota Umino, Fred Rosser, Jacob Fatu versus Team Filthy. Fantastic card here. Very excited for this. Very excited. Let's talk about Collision here. What did you think of Collision? Uh, I About what you said earlier, the same thing. I thought the wrestling was fantastic. Yeah. I didn't get to catch all of it, but... Um... But yeah, there wasn't a lot of storyline advancements. Just turned in the yeah. end. It was more just good wrestling. I have to tell you, uh, I went down this dark, depressive rabbit hole last night. Uh, I saw Iron Claw yesterday. My wife and uh, my good friend Bob, we all went. We saw it. Uh, I have to tell you, it was a very sad movie. I thought the first half of the movie was a di very different movie from the second half of the movie. I know that they did a bunch of re-edits to this thing to kind of tell the story a little bit differently. Uh, you could tell that it was a little chopped together because some things were skipped over very quickly without explanation. However, I thought it was, I, I highly recommend you go see it. But then, you know, my wife got so intrigued by the Von Erich family stuff. And I went through this YouTube rabbit hole of, you know, uh, the dark side of the ring and the story. And it, and it kind of like, I was like, my gosh, like, this is so sad. Like, the business took everything away from these people. Right, like the pro wrestling industry was so engraved in their lives, and at the end, it left them with nothing. Kevin was the only one that was able to break out, and it, that that was you know a remarkable story. Uh, I will say, Zach Efron did a great job. Uh, I had without seeing it, I thought um, I keep forgetting his actual name, the guy that played Kerry, Jeremy Allen uh, Allen White. Is that yeah, it? Jeremy Allen White? Yeah, I always call him Lip from uh, Shameless. I was I couldn't believe that they had casted him for Kerry, but watching his performance in the movie, uh, he was remarkable. He was great. Uh, Fr the guy that played Fritz was the best. Uh, he was nearly identical. If you watch his promos, he did a great job. I, I thought the casting was done well, to be honest. I, I had a lot of criticism before I saw the movie, and then I saw it. Uh, the guy that played David, uh, you know, fit the role really well. Uh, just a really good movie. I highly recommend you seeing it. It's, it uh, listen, it's almost out of the theaters, and it'll be probably on Max or soon, or whatever, wherever the distribution is going to be for A24. Um, I, I definitely thought it, was, uh, thought it was a really good movie, and I highly recommend it. But let's talk about this. I, so I was weird going into wrestling, you know, after consuming all that darkness <laughs> throughout the day. Uh, the show started off with Darby Allin and Sting with Ric Flair defeating the work horsemen, Anthony Henry and J.D. Drake. Flair cut a promo afterwards with Sting at, in the middle of the show, talking about their uh, their return to Charlotte. This was a, this was Sting's last time in Charlotte. Yep. So uh, you know, I think the crowd was happy to see him there. AW Continental Crown Title Match: Eddie Kingston defended against Trent Beretta. Hook laid out a challenge in a pre-tape promo to Samoa Joe. Okay, you know. Put it on a dynamite. Put it on a rampage. Put it on a collision. I want to see that match. I like the hook character. We all know where it's going, right? We know that he's not going to win, but you still want to see it. Uh, Proving Grounds match. ROH World Tag Team Champions, the Undisputed Kingdom. Mike Bennett and, and Matt Taven with Roderick Strong. Defeated Commander and Brian Keith. Why did they got to do dirty by Brian Keith? He is my new favorite wrestler. <laughs> he, he has gone up in the rankings. The bounty hunter, Brian Keith, are you not high on him too? I I think it's fun. I I haven't watched enough of him yet, but yeah, mm. everybody's high on this. Dude. Oh, you, dude, just, I love it. I love him. So good. 
Yeah, he Chris and you know what? I I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you. I had I didn't know much about him prior to a couple weeks ago cuz I don't get to watch the Ring of Honor TV weekly. So, when I, the first time I saw him come out, I looked to Rich and I'm like, "Ooh, who is that guy?" I was into it. <laughs> uh, they did him dirty though. Uh, they defeated Commander Brian Keith. Adam Copeland, the reason why he got he gets one more chance with Christian is um is because he he lost the title and he's the number one contender, right? So he yeah, said he's he, starting tonight. He he's going to issue that, an open challenge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to work his way up uh, the ranking to get that title back. So I guess they'll they'll do this again for the title. Maybe they'll do a TLC match next time. Oh, they can't I mean, call they, it that, but yeah, that would be. I don't know what they could call it. They could call it something. They're gonna do. So- I'm sure they're gonna do something wacky. It's not gonna be like a standard match between the two. Uh, so he laid out a open challenge, and Griff Garrison came out, and he got his butt kicked <laughs> by Adam Copeland. Uh, Sky Blue defeated Kiara Hogan. Sky Blue is becoming one of the most popular uh, women's wrestlers in that company, little by little. I, She's it's wrestled actually... the most. This, did, did you, the mo- the ho- most wrestled women's uh, wrestler of yeah. last year, I do believe. Yeah, she's she's done a lot. Yeah, she, well, she listen, she's young and she's working her way up, and that's how you learn. Mm-hmm. Claudio Castagnoli defeated Andrew Everett. This was a squash, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of those though on this show, and and they do that a lot on Collision, where you'll get these random, very quick, uh, squash style matches. But it's also intriguing, right? Like I want, like the fact that Grip Garrison got a chance to wrestle Adam Copeland. You know, that was, that's huge. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal yeah. for him. And he got to display it on national television. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of how wrestling used to be. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds what? me of WCW Saturday night. It a little really bit, right? A, a little bit. Also, mm-hmm. kudos. Kudos to the team at WBD uh, to that, for that video uh, that they posted on social media. AW put, that was awesome. AEW put it up. Uh, AW Social put it up, and I believe AW on TV put it up, which I believe that's Warner that runs that. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, dude, that video, whoever came up with that concept, is really tapping into whatever childhood nostalgia I have and many other have. So the video is the old TBS theme for WCW, which I absolutely love. I thought they did a great job. If you haven't seen it, go see it. And kudos to those guys. And Tony actually publicly posted what a great job they did. He absolutely loved it. Uh, yeah, it is a little bit like WCW Saturday. And that's why I have fun watching it. It's a fun show. Uh, you had FTR in the main against House of Black. Brody King and Daniel Garcia both got involved after Brody, uh, Brody attacked. Uh, attacks from behind House of Black one-on-one. It lays out everybody. Julia appears at the announce table and does a 10-bell salute. Uh, killing off FTR. Very uh, <laughs> nice ending. Strong ending here. SmackDown. Kevin uh, Kevin Owens defeated Santos Escobar in the opener for the for to win a U.S. title to win the U.S. title tournament. So he's the number one contender. Bobby Lashley, She Profits came out and cut a promo. This was interesting. Carrying Cross walks out with Scarlett, and then Paul Ellering showed up. Yes. AOP has returned after years. At four years. It's four been, years. Since they've been in the company. Yeah. Since they were and there. They've been, they've been signed apparently for, for a while. A year and they just didn't do anything with them. Yeah, they were signed for a while. It was reported that they were returning and they, they've now returned. And I guess they have a faction with Karrion Cross and Scarlett and Paul. I like Paul Ellering being back on TV. Again, it tickles me. Oh, it's yeah. a throwback for me. And he's very good in his role. Uh, the I hope one AOP... white glove got me. <laughs> the one white glove you got you, that? yeah, yeah. One it, because he has his Hall of Fame ring on the outside of the white glove. I was like, "That's odd," but it's yeah. interesting. <laughs> well, he's an odd man, you know. He's an odd man. He's been he's been in and out of the wrestling business for forty years, fifty years. Uh, I so AOP's back. I think you know they they're they're beefing up this tag division. I think this is a positive. Uh, yes, they had such. You know what? You know AOP's fascinating. They had such a great run in NXT, and they were and they were wrestling guys that were tiny. You know, DIY, those matches with DIY were great. And it made you believe. I thought it was well. Uh, well done. Cross uh, then would take out Lashley, so that's the program there. EO Sky, and also Lashley uh, is now in the Rumble. He uh, yes. announced that he's entering. I have that li- yeah. somewhere. Eo Sky defeated Mitchin. Mishin. 
to retain the WWE Women's Championship. Butch and Tyler Bate. Ty Tyler Bate was his special partner. A lot Real of people quick. thought it was Sheamus. Yeah. Real quick, I just go yeah. back to the Eel Sky match. Yeah. Um, that uh, top or second rope Styles Clash that Mission did. Oh, that was great. That was that was interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. This were the, and and they they did it in a way where it protected Eo where she was on in the rope so she yeah. rolled out. But man, yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was good too. Uh, Butch and Tyler Bate defeated Pretty Deadly. Pretty Deadly, they're growing on me. They're growing on me. This was Tyler Bates' official. Uh, Tyler Bates is officially on SmackDown now. He needs to clean up again. He needs to become a handsome boy again. Not forget about the long <laughs> hair and the beard. Trim the be tr get get that nice tight haircut. Trim the beard a little bit. You know. Go back to his original run. Randy Orton, AJ Styles, and LA Knight in the main main event. It was a no contest. They went nineteen twenty one of TV time. At the end, actually, that was a. L.A. Knight got busted open. Okay? Styles went for the 450. I don't know what happened here. Styles does a 450, and I see L.A. Knight just doing one of these a couple times on his head. And I was like, is he gigging? Like, he was touching that forehead a little bit too much. I don't know what happened. If, if I think what, what happened was uh, the clothing maybe cut him on the head. Something from yeah, I his, think his outfit. Hand got him. I think his, his hand glove. got him. Something got him. Because yeah, and then he went up and and touched his head with the back of his hand. That's why I was like, because I went back and watched. And like I think Styles times. maybe like put in a couple yeah. punches to kind of open him up a little bit more uh, when they were going back and forth. But <laughs> he went to the outside, comes back in, and he is covered in blood. And the camera's not shying away from him. They let it play out, which yeah. added more to it. But Roman came with the bloodline. They interfered. Uh, total chaos. And Nick Aldis was at ringside, and he told Heyman that at Rumble, it would be a fatal four-way. So now, here's what Royal Rumble looks like. For the men's, this is who's declared. Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Lashley. Man, that face-to-face -face between Cody and CM Punk is going to be something, isn't it? It's going to be great. That's going to be something. That is going well, to be already, a moment. They already have talked backstage, yeah. but yeah, definitely. The women's. Women's declared is Bailey, Nia Jax, Becky Lynch, and Bianca. Undisputed WWE Championship. Randy Orton, LA Knight, AJ Styles, and Roman. And also United States Championship, Logan Paul and Kevin Owens. This is all shaping up to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure we're going to get some more matches. We'll get some more information on The Rock this week, whether or not uh, what's going on with that and when that match happens. A lot of moving parts here. When we come back, we're going to wrap up the show, Wrestling Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. Wednesday night's Dynamite lineup. This looks like a good card. They're back at Daly's place. They'll be sold out there. I think it's like 20-something hundred seats. It's not a lot, but it's a cool venue. You know, it's a very unique look. Samoa Joe will be at Daly's place. Do we see him debut the new title? Possibly. He did say he has a new title coming, and we did see the images. And I was told that they're getting a new center plate like a year ago. After Max won that title, I was told that there's a new title that's going to be made uh, with a new center plate. They're, we're getting a Texas Tornado match. Sting and Darby Allen. Takeshita and Powerhouse Hobbs. So this will be a brawl. Ricky Starks versus Sammy Guevara. Claudio Castagnoli versus Hangman Page. Do we get Mercedes? Do we get Mercedes signing her AEW contract or whatever they do? I don't this is know. The fifth, this is like, what, the fifth anniversary of... Uh, fifth anniversary. Of um, Dynamite, mm -hmm. something like that, yeah. Yeah. It's a so, monumental show for them, yeah. It's a monumental show. Is it possible she debuts next week? I, I don't I don't know, but I, I do... I still, I will say, I, I stand by the fact I expect her to be there in AEW, not at the show. I don't know. Maybe I'll have some more information by Tuesday. But, or by Wednesday morning, I'll have some more info. But I don't know if Mercedes is going to be there. But if she shows up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mean something. You know, this, they want to present this like a CM Punk type moment. You know, they understand the importance of the big names. Because guess what? There's not too many in the industry that could have that pull. Can Mercedes? It'll be tested. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Next week on the show, I'm sure we're going to talk about this and a whole lot more. 
I got a whole bunch of other stuff. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian, and we'll be back next week on Wrestling Observer Live.